power trip or ignorance or just not giving a damn. It's unclear what John Harrell was thinking when he made two football players on the Rockwall Heath High School football team do 400, 400 push-ups in less than an hour. That decision sent two players, children, to the hospital for several days. They were reportedly unable to lift their arms and had dark urine. Thankfully, the school has bench Harrow from coaching for the time being. You're looking at him there. He's under investigation, L relieved of duty. Now, Child Protective Services also investigating. Let's bring in our guest, Dr. Donna Shali from Arch Point Pain Institute and RSCSports.com founder, Jim Hicks. So, Jim, what do we know about this coach so far? Well, John Harrow had been on, and on the job at Rockwall Heat for about three years. This was his first season as a head coach right there. And <coughs> he was also a strength and conditioning coach, like the bodybuilding coach mm -hmm. there. So you could see some of those, the, you know, coaches like in that sense of situation can be a little rougher and tougher in their, in their you know, Overly workouts. aggressive. Yeah. But it's, well, it could be normal to him. Right, right. Being a bodybuilding coach. You know, uh -huh. it's like you got to get, you know, get you right. So, but, but let's talk about this, Jim. 400 push-ups in an hour. And we're talking about kids. The football players are athletes, but they're still children. Well, the, the key to this is, this, is about the push-ups. These were push-ups were supposed to be and required to be done in succession. Right. Because if you're talking about 400 push-ups in an hour, that's roughly six push-ups a minute. So, mm -hmm. you know, I might can do five and a quarter, you know, you know. But what I'm saying, so in a row, that's where the problem comes in to play in regard to this. Those kids, it basically their muscles broke down. And then, then you had big problems. And this coach probably didn't realize what he was getting himself into. Don't know, wasn't there. But should he have known? He should have known. Yes, because you know your players. These mm -hmm. weren't incoming freshmen, mm -hmm. you know? Now, if they were incoming freshmen, which is not as impossible because you're in the middle of the school. This was the eight-period school cl uh, se uh, class that they were doing, allegedly doing this in. Now, Dr. Ali, let's talk about, first of all, what we heard in the headlines, dark urine. Yeah. What does that mean? So what happens is, and we're going to talk about rhabdomyolysis, which is a breakdown of your enzymes and proteins as it relates to muscles, so when you're doing a lots of activities, so marathon, for example, mm -hmm. folks that run 25 miles, 12 miles, whatever it may be, their muscles break down. Where do they go? They go into the kidneys. The kidneys are responsible for breaking down all these proteins and enzymes, right? And so what happens is that when you're breaking down, when you're doing all these push-ups, when you're doing all these running and activities, your muscles are working hard. When they're working hard, they send all the proteins to the kidneys. The kidneys go into overload and they get into a stage of failure. When they get into a stage of failure, they're not working as well as they should. And that's what happened in some of these kids that were hospitalized, these kidneys stopped working. This coach, this person ended up making them work over hard, did not do it a progression of muscles where they should be engaged in a way where they do a few at a time and he just went to the max and what happened is that the muscles broke down, broke down and they ended up in causing some of the kidney injuries. And what could happen if you're doing, as he said, in succession, 400 push-ups, like right behind each other, what could that do to the heart? What could so that what do? it does is that it breaks down all these enzymes and proteins and your, wor your heart is working harder than it normally should. And it works harder, when it works harder, it makes it difficult for, the, for it to pump all the oxygenation, all the blood that it needs to the different areas. And what happens is that blood doesn't get to that organs. Mm -hmm. So for your heart, your lungs, your brain, it doesn't get to those areas and when it doesn't that's when it goes into failure and that that's when it goes into trouble and that's when we could see it lead to cardiac arrest for the can. wrong it can't and that's what we see in folks who and especially folks that are hospitalized especially these two kids that ended up being hospitalized that weren't appropriately managed and appropriately got to a point where they were worked up to all these uh, push-ups that they were doing and all these cardiac exercises that they were doing, they ended up 
over exercising their heart and their kidneys and they ended up into kidney failure and heart arrest as well. So Jim, how common or uncommon is this in high school athletics where coaches push students too far? I mean, in football, it's that's sad to say it's normal. Right. And but however, here's the thing. We're talking about a situation where these kids are in, in the hospital. And it was more than two, Isaiah. Right. Mm -hmm. On the picture photos that are rolling right now a while ago, that's three that we saw just then. It's at least three that were in mm -hmm. there. And the thing is, up in, in Rockwall Heath, in that community, a lot of the people are siding with the coach. They're being empathetic towards him, having his back. So now, and other people are speaking out, and mothers, are, and we've seen this come out and spoke out in defense of their kids. What happens is, we, if you raise up the rug, the floor mat, look up under the bottom, this stuff is, is treading right along racial lines mm -hmm. at this school. What does that mean, though? I don't, I don't quite follow you well, there well, when it comes to race. Well, here's the deal. I'm going to toss a question to Dr. Ali. Let's say, what if these kids that the majority of these kids who was hospitalized, what if they were of color? What if they were black and had the sickle cell trait? What would happen, Doc? So we know as folks who have other comorbidities such as sickle cell, mm -hmm. as you talked about, and other medical comorbidities, that there are at higher risk for muscle breakdown and kidney injury and heart injury. We don't know in these specific kids, in these specific patients, that they had that per se, but uh, if they're African American, we know that they're at a higher risk for sickle cell trait and other uh, medical comorbidities that li may lead them to further breakdown of okay. enzymes. Okay, make your point really quick because we're out of time. When, when, I'm still waiting on you to make that point. When, and that's the Just say it. The, say what you want to say. I mean, hell, mo a lot of those kids that were that were hospitalized were of color, and it's possible. It's possible they could have had the sick. They have possessed the sickle cell trait. And if that's the case, Isaiah, in 2016, there was a case in the University of Oregon. A young man named Doug Brenner. Out of time, but I, I got your point. All right.